morning and welcome back to the class. We are in the last previous class, I talked about lithium sensors. So, today I will talk about sodium sensor. Okay, Let us look at sodium. The sensor would be one which should be able to able to detect detect 0 0.3 to 300 millimole of sodium. in blood, in human blood, okay? in blood. So, this is one condition. Second condition is should be able to detect within the physiological pH pH that is 6.6 .6 to 7.8 within this pH range that is when you you are thinking about constructing a sodium ion sensors this should be in your mind okay now that the basic ideas are clear to you you should be able to design okay and finally sodium should be able to detect preferentially over lithium and potassium. over lithium and potassium, specially potassium because sodium and potassium are two very important alkali metals present in our body. So, we have to have a uh, receptor which will bind sodium ion preferentially over potassium and in manic depression present usually lithium is uh, given. Okay, lithium drugs. So, there will be lithium. So, lithium is a smallest uh, cation and it should be really hydrated in cell in vivo. So, we uh, lithium uh, discrimination is easier than potassium. So, here I will give you some examples of very good examples of sodium well, one of them I have already given like this one. Oh, that is why I am getting problem, getting into problem, yeah. Okay. As I told you previously, I am putting aromatic as such and then 
we can have this nitrogen and 5 ethereal oxygen. If we put 6 ethereal oxygen that binds preferentially potassium. Okay, so, sodium will come here, sodium will be here and once sodium binds the lone pair is engaged is easy. Okay, so, when we take it when the it is empty, when the cavity is empty then there is no fluorescence because of PET, but when sodium is added then the lone pair is engaged. So, PET is blocked and we see a strong fluorescence. Another uh, new uh, well this is a another again same nitrogen another system. Okay, so, this is uh, I am not writing all, all of it there are 5 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 same as this one, this one I am writing in a different way and then maybe I will forget it, I will write something else okay. another one. See there are numerous numerous way you can have these uh, sensors, it is not necessary that I should uh, give you all it, all of it. Here is one very interesting one, let me write it with some time, okay. writing it is difficult, this is based on calixarines, those who are macrocycle and this is calixarine and this is interesting, that is why I am writing. Okay. So, I am just writing calixarines. Okay. Okay. and they are bound. Okay. So, we know that they are bound. Okay. So, this these are bound which way I may be wrong the structure wise, but this is my okay, may be I should not write. Okay. So, this is my representation of calixarine. What happened calixarine for calixarine had tertiary butyl which were removed all, all were removed and because all were removed and the oxygen part, all of us remember this right. Let me draw it, this, this you have OH, OH OH and OH all of us remembered this, this, this and this. Okay. This is calyx 4 arene where I am showing there. So, this one is inverted and the oxygens inverted and the tertiary butyl groups are removed, they can be removed. I showed, I told you that they can be removed with the help of aluminum trichloride and all that. All right, this oxygen, 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 oxygen. I am showing it because it is a new kind of method to detect. This will encourage you to design your own compound. You can go ahead and design it for fun. A 
ethyl ester, 2 are carboxylate, this is uh, 1, 3 and what happening to 1, 2? 1, 2 are drawn this way, double bond O carboxylate this and here is pyrene. Pyrene I am writing because it is very difficult to write so many things here, pyrene. this is pyrene. So, this pyrene, okay. I am just explaining to you how this is done, all right. Then single bond oxygen, then this, 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 double bond oxygen, then go there oxygen and then you have nitrobenzene added, nitrobenzene. Okay. So, it is bound through this and nitrobenzene. This is pyrene and this is nitrobenzene. This is nitrobenzene. Now, what happens when nothing is added? When nothing is added, okay, input is nothing, nil that time this pyrene is electron rich pi system and nitrobenzene is electron poor because nitrogen is a very strong nitro group is a very strong electron withdrawing agent so this pi is electron somewhat electron deficient so therefore it has strong attraction for pyrene and when there is nothing then pyrene and nitro groups are coming close to each other. Okay. Pi stacking and they are coming to close to each other. If they come close to each other, that time pyrene is my fluorophore. So, if I excite my fluorophore, pyrene will be excited, but since nitro group is close by, then there will be PET, there will be PET. So, P T on fluorescence gone. So, if P T is on fluorescence is gone, you can remember this, I just made it up. P T on fluorescence gone. So, no fluorescence, why no fluorescence? because it can de-excite through PET. Okay. So, however, when I put sodium ion, specifically sodium ion, sodium ion goes here, inside here. We can draw different color, does not matter, sodium, 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 which one color I will put? Maybe this one sodium. No, it did not work. Sodium, how about this? Okay. Sodium. So, sodium when I put, so when sodium I put here as input, then what will happen? Sodium will bind to this oxygen, this, 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 hmm. all these oxygens it will bind, it will bind to this 
because they bind to sodium. So, therefore, these oxygens will move away because when you have this bond, when you have bond between two, two atoms or atom and ion, there must be a definite bond length. That means, if sodium ion is here, oxygen has to be there. So, so therefore, when I put sodium, these oxygens will move apart, you understanding? And why they will move apart? Because of the property of calixarin, they are quite flexible. You know that they can move apart or come closer. If they move apart very much, they can go down. That we have learned while discussing calixarin. They can go down and up. Down means what? Down means they were like this, so they will come like this. So, therefore, in one words, these oxygens will go further apart. If they go further apart, then my pyrene and nitro, nitrobenzene are moving away from each other. If they are moving away from each other, there is no bonding between them. There was earlier there was some weak bonding between pi poor and pi excess. So, P T was possible, all right. But because they move away from each other, so when now I, ex I excite pyrene, then no P T. So, now P T is gone fluorescence on. So, my P T gone fluorescence on as simple as that. So, this is based on P T photo induced electron transfer. However, we have cleverly used, we have cleverly designed or so whoever designed it, he has cleverly designed on based on the property of calixarines flexibility. Okay. So, this is very an excellent day that is why I told you that otherwise a simply P T sensors you already know. All right. Now, I come to potassium. So, for potassium also like sodium, potassium what likes potassium? Potassium likes a bigger calixarin, a, a bigger uh, a bigger macro cycle okay? because potassium ion is a, it will like a bigger 18 member. it will like a bigger one. It will like a bigger macro cycle. With macro cycle, these are easy to design, but I would like you to design on your own, which is not available in literature, okay. but using the property of the supramolecular synthons we have been discussing for such a long time. So, it can be done with this or in the morning session I forgot this molecule, but now I remember sometimes I am getting old and forgetting things. So, this is called coumarin. I sat quietly one place and then I remembered. Okay. This is also a coumarin derivative, Me2 okay. Okay. I made a mistake. No, 
Oh, Kumari, yeah, that's what I think. This is Kumarin. Okay, so this kumarin, this is my kumarin, and it is conjugated all along, conjugated, and then nitrogen, and again that macrocycle. So nothing uh, great about this because this is a. Uh, if you can easily, this is easily found, anthracene and thrile moiety. So this is a kumarin. It will give emission at a different position. Kumarin is a, this is a Kumarin derivative, this is a Kumarin moiety. Kumarin, let me write Kumarin. Kumarins are photophysically very important and they gave the quantum yield very high. So, that is why the Kumarins are sometimes used, but is a tedious, expensive anthracene is very easy, it will give fluorescence. So, when these are empty, P e t is on, when excite, P e t is on. So, therefore, no fluorescence and when they are occupied, then P e t will be blocked, stop, P e t is off and fluorescence is on okay, in both these cases. So, they used another one Another one is uh, cryptand. Okay. Okay, is a cryptand, and here is an aromatic. I don't know. This is not a very uh, useful to have, but they made it because of synthetic difficulties and all that. Okay, this is a benzene here, and that is. Related to uh, again connected to anthracene. Connected to anthracene. Okay, so this is also a potassium. When it is empty, when I excite this fluorophore, then from nitrogen. Ha! Huh, now I remember why this is there. From nitrogen lone pair, this is connected to this aromatic group. So, through the with the help of the aromatics, electron can be pushed towards anthracene and thrile moiety. So, that is why this aromatic group. Okay. And here is also same aromatic group. I think you know how to synthesize this molecule. You can synthesize it, this molecule by means of stepwise method. Why stepwise? Because only this bridge is different. These two bridges are same, but this is different. So, stepwise method you can make. All right. So, this is also a compound when this is empty, then from this lone pair through this benzene ring it comes here. So, P t will be on all the way, but when you have a metal here, metal is potassium, then it will be engaged and P t is off and we will see a strong fluorescence. Okay.
and then this one is also known with Kumarin. With Kumarin, this is also known. With Kumarin, this is also known. CF3. These are another Kumarin, okay. Kumarin derivative. This is also Kumarin derivative. This is not connected, but this is integrated. That is the difference between two. Okay. This is the compound and here also this is a Kumarin derivative when it is empty even though it is integrated no fluorescence, but when I put potassium we see very, see very strong fluorescence. So, that means I get now with many many systems where you have either receptor and and fluorophore integrated or receptor and fluorophore connected through spacers of different kind okay in both systems we see these are all the, these are mechanism is photo induced electron transfer so this way there are sensors for cesium, sensors for rubidium, we are not bothering and giving you details, but it will be very interesting for you to try and make and design at least on piece of paper, whether that is synthetically possible we will discuss later with you, but you can design this receptor and fluorophore you can take only anthracene does not matter. With anthracene fluorophore you choose different receptors for different metal ions okay, that will be fun. So, these are alkali metals some of them can be used for alkaline earth metal also. You know the alkaline earth metals two are very important one is calcium and other is magnesium. So, these two are present in our body, these are essential and calcium sensor and magnesium sensors are also available. So, those also we are going to discuss, but they are done on different uh, mechanisms. So, what I am going, going to do in the next class will be transition metal induced fluorescence. Okay, thank you.